The Biden administration's plan to administer 100 million COVID-19 vaccines in its first 100 days just got kicked up a notch. Yesterday, President Biden announced he believes the country can administer 1.5 million shots a day in the coming weeks for a total of 150 million vaccinations in the next 100 days. So we've got our Dr. Pyle Coley joining us live. Yay. Hey, doctor. Okay, so what do you think of this updated plan? Is it doable? Do you wish it would be more vaccines, less vaccines? What would Dr. Coley do? You know, if you had asked me a week ago, I would say that even, you know, 100 million is ambitious. But where we are today, I'm actually feeling this is very doable. And the, the higher we keep pushing that ceiling, the more we're going to get those vaccines into those arms. So if you look at the trend of what we've been doing since December 14th, when we started vaccinating, it's really shown a nice increase in the number of vaccines we're giving each week. In fact, just last week, we, we gave an average of 1.25 million doses every day. So I think we're getting ever closer. And the reason is because we figured out what we need to make this a reality. We need just two simple things. We need the vaccines and we need the vaccinators. So the vaccines haven't really been a problem because the supply chain has not been disrupted. And many companies have now committed to delivering several hundred billion doses in the next couple of months. So I don't see that being a problem. It's really the vaccinators, the facilities, the people, the logistics that has proven to be a problem. But we've now seen more mass vaccination sites being rolled out. So I think this will all become a reality very soon. All right, uh, some good news. I'm sorry, you have to yeah. give me a second, Doc. It's like, it's, we been, it's been some months, so yeah. I'm like, wait, I, where I know, am I'm I? usually the bearer of bad news. <laughs> I'm usually the bearer of bad news, so I mixed it up a little today. I love it, Grab. Let's go with that. Now, uh, the World Health Organization says the, Mo the Moderna vaccine should not be given to pregnant women. What do you think about this? It's interesting. So this warning is based on the fact that we have a lack of data. What we do know, Al, is that pregnant women have a higher risk of having a serious COVID illness. We also have some data actually that snuck in because some of the people in the Pfizer trial were pregnant and didn't know it, but ended up getting the vaccine. And then they went on to have normal pregnancies and deliver normal, healthy babies. So I actually feel different from the World Health Organization. I think if you're a pregnant woman with a high risk of exposure, if you're a pregnant woman with a lot of serious underlying medical problems, or if you're pregnant with average risk, but late in your pregnancy, you really should talk to your obstetrician about getting it. Because with the, vac with the virus raging in the community, the vaccine is one of the ways in which we can protect these women. Wow, two, that's, that's two good news in a we're, row. We're two for two right yes. now, Dr. Coley. Two I'm, for I'm, two. I'm, I'm, Are I'm you ready for number three? I'm yes. on the wheel right here. So I, I hear that there's a drug that's normally used to, to treat gout that could help uh, patients with mild cases stay out of the hospital. Could you elaborate on that? Dr. Coley, we just talked about this, you and I, last night. Uh, to we our, talked yeah, to our I viewers. Know. Yeah, Dr. Coley's been helping my family out. And Dr. Coley, yeah, please speak to it. Yeah, this is really, really, really good news, guys. So this is a drug called colchicine, which has been around for decades, so we know it's safe. It's usually used in gout. It's an anti-inflammatory. And what we're learning is if you give it to people who test positive by PCR for COVID early in the course of their illness, you can reduce their chance of getting into the hospital by 25 percent, reduce mm. their chance of getting on a ventilator by 50 percent, wow. and reduce their risk of dying by 44 percent. So this is a drug that's available, that's well tolerated, that we can can give to outpatients and really change the trajectory of things. So I was so excited to hear this because it's the first oral drug that's available to outpatients as prevention. And I'm really hoping that Al will give me a silver lining shout out for this one because it's silver just such good news. Silver lining, y'all. We <laughs> needed this three. today. We did this is that. just all good. This isn't even a silver <laughs> lining. So let's get out of the segment now. Mm -hmm. We love you, Dr. Coley. Thanks, Thank Doc. you. Thanks, uh, we'll be right back.